homework. Wow. Look at what my teacher did. She gave me a zero on the team evaluations. The evaluation rubric is empty. No total points awarded or name stated. Wait just a minute here. Oh, look at that. There's Eli's evaluation and there's Brooke's evaluation. I didn't submit an empty rubric. Yeah, there's one, an empty rubric in the first tab. I guess that's why she was confused. And if you even open the document itself, same thing. If you There's three tabs at the bottom. There's this one, then there's my two teammates tabs. That's what I thought the instructions told me to do. So I did that. But she thinks I didn't submit anything. That's hilarious. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Well, now what's my grade in the class? A 28%. <laughs> That's funny. 28% is my grade. Oh, and my professor gave me two points on the quiz. So basically on the quiz, there were a bunch of questions that were not from the ratings. I'm certain there were at least two. Because two of the questions were asking about stuff from chapter 5, I'm certain. I'm 100% sure that two of the questions were from chapter 5, and there were also like two other questions that I wasn't sure of either. The professor was like, let's see. There is one question in the quiz from a wrong chapter. Happy to give you the two points. Oh my gosh. Well, at least I got two points, but still. Seriously? There were obviously at least two. There were two questions that were relating to, like, the glass, well, not glass thing, but, like, glass elevator and, like, masculine something or other. It was, they were both from Chapter 5. Okay, now I have to do two assignments. Yeah. Something to do with big five personality traits. So now I have to read something. I wonder what my exam grade would be. I wonder how long it's going to take for her to fix the grade on this team evaluations. I literally, I saw it as it happened. Like, I, I noticed her giving me the grade as soon as she gave it to me and it was a zero and then I emailed her immediately. <laughs> oh man. I don't know how often she checks her email, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's probably going to be stuck there for another day. Who knows? <laughs> I wonder if he wrote anything in this forum. Oh, actually, uh, no, there's nothing here. <laughs> um, this Unit 2 content is always just like a summary of the stuff we're going to talk about. Mm, overview. Outcomes. Unit 2 commentary. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, this thing. I don't know if this is really necessary to read or watch. I remember watching the first one and it didn't really help. Oh, not subscribed. Well, I guess I should subscribe to it, but... <laughs> this is due on the 29th. What are we doing here? Oh my goodness, five sections. And well, at least it's not do the two. Chapter two and three. <sighs> 
I might not read the chapters just yet. I might actually just focus on doing, doing the assignments. Or read the only the part that's relevant to the assignment. The assignment might end up being relevant to chapter 2. Big 5 personality traits. I don't feel like reading a whole chapter. So I'm, I'm just going to... And I have good reason to not read it just yet. Because I have another assignment that's going to take 5 years. Whoa. Read chapter two, chapter three. That was funny. Um, that was a funny sniffy. How long will it take for you to fix the grade? Dang it. I'm just making sure I sent the right email. How could she have possibly missed that? How? She should think twice before seeing an empty rubric and being like, hmm, am I missing something? Is there tabs at the bottom? Like, she's had to have used Excel for, like, decades. <laughs> well, I don't know about decades, but, like, forever. She's used Excel for a long time, and how could she miss that? How? So, five-factor model? Is it literally just the... Big five personality traits. Right there. So maybe we can just kind of start reading the chapter, and, and then once we get through that part, we'll stop. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Oh. And also, I can change the font to be bigger. I don't know why I never noticed. I can do this. Nice intro. Oh. Well, I can read a couple of paragraphs. It's not that big of a deal. Five factor model, model, also known as Big Five. All we have to do is read to the end of this little section here, I think. Well. Dang it. There's a lot of stuff about it. Dang it. Okay. So, probably just to, to here. So, 51. So. Yeah, we can read that. Dang. That was funny. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Time to read about personality. Yay! Is this entire chapter about personality?
até o Oscar, né? Personnel in the relatively enduring pattern of thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that characterize the person, along with the psychological processes behind those characteristics. Why is the font different? It's probably because I made it bigger. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Stabilizes at the age of 30. Takes all the way till 30 <laughs> to get your personality. <laughs> I have no idea what social vitality means.
canoe. Wow. <laughs> Done. Five factor model or big five. Up. How often am I gonna check if she changed my grade? Maybe I'll just go home. Maybe I'll just go to the five broad dimensions representing them representing most personality traits. Conscientiousness, emotional stability, openness to experience, agreeableness, and extroversion. Conscientiousness characterizes people who are organized, dependable, goal-focused, thorough, disciplined, methodical, and industrious. What is industrious? <laughs> that is not me. Yay! People with low conscientiousness tend to be careless, disorganized, and less thorough. Agreeableness. Describe people who are trusting, helpful, good natured, considerate, tolerant, selfless, generous, and flexible. People with low agreeableness tend to be uncooperative and intolerant of others' needs, as well as more suspicious and self focused. <laughs> Neuroticism. What? What? The, what? Agreeable consciousness, agreeableness, neuroticism. Which one is neuroticism referring to? I'm assuming it's emotional stability. Yes. Neuroticism. It's not even in the Google Dictionary. Uh, refers. Why does this one call it emotional stability instead of neuroticism? Refers to people who tend to be anxious, insecure, self-conscious, depressed, and temperamental. Well, I don't know. Defitinian, Defitinian, Defitinian. <laughs> In contrast, people with low neuroticism, high emotional stability, are poised, secure, and calm. <laughs> Having a composed and self-assured manner. Ooh. Openness to experience characterizes people who are imaginative, creative, unconventional, curious, non-conforming, autonomous, and aesthetically perceptive. <laughs> Those with low scores tend to be more resistant to change, less open to new ideas, more conventional and fixed in their ways. <laughs> Thanks for st extroversion. Describes people who are outgoing, talkative. This assignment's gonna suck. <laughs> Describes people who are outgoing, talkative, energetic, sociable, and assertive. Opposite is introversion, which applies to those who are quiet, cautious, less interactive with others. Extroverts get more 
get their energy from people and things around them, whereas introverts get their energy more from personal reflection on concepts and ideas. Introverts do not necessarily lack social skills, instead they are more inclined to direct their interests to ideas than to social events. Introverts feel more comfortable being alone than to extroverts. <laughs> <laughs> you really had to put it Five-factor model and work performance. Personality mainly affects behavior and performance through motivation. Specifically by influencing employees' direction and intensity of effort, what goals they choose to reach, and how much of effort they apply to reach those goals. Consequently, all of the big five factors predict one or more types of employee behavior and performance through some extent level. Stupid. Oh. Highlights which big five personality factors best predict the three types of task performance. As well as organizational citizenship and counterproductive work behaviors, conscientiousness stands out as the best overall personality predictor of proficient task performance for most jobs. The specific conscientiousness <laughs> traits. Of industriousness, achievement, self-discipline, purposefulness, and dutifulness are the best predictors of proficient task performance. Conscientious employees set higher personal goals for themselves and are more persistent, also engage in more organizational citizenship, and in less counterproductive work behavior, conscientiousness is a weak predictor of adaptive responding to change and proactive performance, taking initiative toward new work patterns. In fact, two specific conscientiousness traits, orderliness and dependability, tend to suppress adaptivity. Type of performance, proficient task performance, conscientiousness, extroversion, adaptive task performance, emotional stability, extroversion, openness to experience, proactive task performance, extroversion, openness to experience. Organizational sessions, subconsciousness, agreeableness. Counterproductive work behaviors, conscientious, agreeableness. Extroversion is the second best overall personality predictor of proficient task performance, but is a much weaker predictor than is conscientiousness among the specific pairs <clears throat> within the extroversion factor. 
for assertiveness and positive emotionality are the strongest predictors of proficient task performance. Assertiveness is also a strong predictor of adaptive and proactive performance. Assertive employees tend to have a take charge approach to situations which is consistent with adapting to change and proactively initiating change. Extraversion is associated with influencing others and being Comfortable in social settings, which along with being assertive. along with being assertive explains why effective leaders and salespeople tend to be somewhat more extroverted than the general population. <laughs> Agreeableness is positively associated with most forms of organizational citizenship and negatively associated with counterproductive work behavior. <laughs> The reason is that employees with high agreeableness are more cooperative, sensitive, flexible, and supportive. Agreeableness does not predict proficient or proactive task performance very well, mainly because it is associated with lower motivation to set goals and achieve results. However, employees with higher, but not too high, agreeableness tend to improve team performance through better knowledge sharing and motivation to help the team. Agreeableness also has a positive effect on friendliness behavior in customer service jobs. For example, this section of the chapter opened with a story about Delaware North Companies, which identified friendliness, a form of agreeableness as a personality trait of successful call center agents. Openness to experience Openness to experience is a weak predictor of proficient task performance, but is one of the best personality predictors of adaptive and proactive performance. The main reason is that employees with higher opinion, openness scores have more curiosity, imagination, and tolerance of change. These traits also explain why openness to change is associated with successful performance and creative work. Emotional stability, low neuroticism, is one of the best personality predictors of adaptive performance. The central explanation is that employees with higher emotional stability cope better with and the ambiguity and uncertainty of change. In contrast, those with higher neuroticism would be the change of the threat, so they tend to avoid change and experience more stress when faced with word voice adjustments. These characteristics would suggest that emotional stability also predicts proactive performance. But the limited research has reported mixed results. Issues in the finding of high fire now. Higher isn't always better. So, part of the problem may be that the labels and structure of the big five factors have a strong linear bias. High is good, low is bad. <laughs> Several studies have reported that the best employees don't have the highest scores on some personality factors. The relationship between personality and performance is often nonlinear. Employees with moderate extroversion perform better in sales jobs than those with high or low extroversion. One recent study has found that students with the best peer-related contributions to teamwork have relatively high extroversion but moderately high conscientiousness and only around the midpoint of agreeableness. 
specific traits may be better predictors than the big five factors. We pay so much attention to the big five factors that it's easy to forget that each factor clusters several specific personality traits, for instance, conscientiousness. Clusters specific traits such as organized, dependable, goal focused, thorough, disciplined, methodical, industrious specific traits are sometimes better than the broader factor at predicting behavior or performance. For example, earlier we pointed out that the specific extroversion traits of assertiveness and positive emotionality predicts proficient task performance better than the other extroversion traits or the overall extroversion factor. Personality isn't static. There is an unfortunate tendency to think that that's the way. <laughs> they are. Wow. That's the way she is. If, as if an adult's personality is frozen for a lifetime. Labeling people. He's an introvert. Reinforces this fallacy that personality is static. Personality does, does stabilize around age 30, but that doesn't mean it is static as we know it is. At the beginning of this topic, some big five factors tend to increase or decrease as we age. Some personality factors also change when our environment significantly changes over time. Over a long time. So we'll move to a different culture of working in a job for many years. The five-factor model doesn't cover all personality. Many of us, including some researchers, should make the mistake of assuming that the five-factor model matches all of our personality. <laughs> That's one. The five-factor model does, does capture a large portion of the domain we call personality. But not all of it. As mentioned at the outset of this topic, personality is difficult to find to focus. There are several different, different perspectives on this topic. The Big Five reflects only some of these perspectives. This is apparent in the next section of this chapter, which introduces two other models of personality that only partially overlap with the Big Five factors. Okay, that's all I have to read. Great. This assignment's hard. This assignment's hard. It's hard. Let's see if she changed my grade. How often am I going to check? Man, okay, um... So, which ones are the most relevant for different jobs? That funny. Calling on existing customers. Oh, this is so hard. Sales representative. What are the factors? Factors. Did they mention sales representative anywhere here? I think they did. How about we try and find the word sale and then go down? Says salespeople extroversion. That's one clue. It, this random study that they said said actually moderate extroversion is better than high or low. Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was it. Oh man, okay. Um, I mean, literally, the entire job of salespeople is to talk to people. How could that not be extra? <laughs> I mean, agreeableness. Well, 
Well, yeah, but like... You have to be assertive when you're talking to somebody as a salesperson. It's a paint. I feel like everybody's going to answer extra version for sales representative. But, I mean, what else could it possibly be? It has to be extra version. Neuroticism. Like, it's so obviously extroversion. So obviously. It has to be extroversion. Agreeableness, but I mean, it's either it's going to come down to either agreeableness or extroversion for, for that one. Probably. Office manager. The office manager oversees the work of a staff of 20 secretaries, receptionists, and clerks. They hire them. Train them. Evaluates their performance. Sets their pay. Schedules working hours. Disciplines or fires work. Oh, that's hard. Come on. I don't know. Warehouse worker, warehouse worker. Unloads trucks. Carry shipments to shelves for storage. Pull customer orders from shelves, take products for packing, follow orders precisely, and little room for autonomy or interaction with others generally. <laughs> well. Well, okay, extroversion. Office manager.
man. What if you pick the same one for both? What if you pick the same personality trait for two jobs? It's assuming that you need it's that you need one for each. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Maybe conscientiousness. <laughs> what on earth would be the answer for the manager? I feel like extroversion and the and conscientiousness are the answer for for all of them. I can't. What about the middle three? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Probably the office manager is not the conscience. Oh my goodness. openness to experience I mean, I have like a whole hour. <laughs> Maybe um, how to measure extroversion. How? Yes. <laughs> like this is actually harder than I was. I think originally. That was funny. 
That was funny, 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 that was funny. Yeah, but I still have another assignment to do. I can't just do this one. Oh, no. Write a series of questions that you think may help us as for measure those traits in prospecting employees. Why can't I just steal questions from their, their assessments? It's okay. It doesn't have to be like epically good questions. It just has to be questions that you think does it. Think, 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 think. <laughs> Extroversion. I will read all the information about extroversion. Thank you. If you copy this pasting options, save. Extroversion describes people who are outgoing, talkative, energetic, sociable, assertive. Introversion to those who are firefighters let's interact with others what is the definition there are different people and things around them whereas it's red slack get there and do more than throwing up on concepts and ideas Introverts do not necessarily lack social skills. They are more inclined to direct their interests to ideas than to social events. Introverts feel more comfortable being alone than to ask for control. Okay. Questions. Question. Oh no! Do you strongly agree or strongly disagree? It's basically on a scale of. Check my grade again. Nope. Why can't I steal questions? <laughs> How to measure? It will help you assess how the applicant scores on a particular trait. These questions should be of the type that can be answered on a five point scale. For example, strong agree. Agree. Neither agree nor disagree. A disagree. Strongly disagree. One, two, three, four, five. So basically, all of the questions will be basically like. Gosh, I'm probably gonna ask questions. Oh, 
Wow, I sniffed it, sniffed. <laughs> that was a sniffy and snow. Sniff. One. Strongly disagree. Two. Disagree. Three. Neither. Agree nor. Agree or dis. Agree. Four. Agree. Five. Strongly agree. So. That. The question, the question is a question. A question. Dang, question. Dang, I don't know how to, uh, to, uh, um, how to measure an extra. Why? Uh, why do you have to ask five questions? I don't know. I mean, yes. What? Question. Question is a question. Oh, what's that? Think. Five. The only information they have about extroversion is that. I was gonna ask like two for both extroversion and introversion, and then one for one. I don't know. Um. Oh, thank goodness. No, it's not a change screen. It's just it notifying me of the fact that it got a zero. Thanks for that notification, buddy. Thanks. Dang it. Enough. Come on. Positive. Questions about intro. Dang it. It doesn't work because if you answer strongly agree on an introversion question that would basically be the same thing as strongly disagree on an extroversion question which would mean that instead of adding five you would add one dang it man I hate this because All of the questions have to be centered around extroversion. Or the opposite of introverted. If you ask, you are not introvert trait. That means you are. I hate the format. God. Man. Well, I just have to reword the question after. No, I don't want
I can't waste time on this thing. I can't. Because I have the other assignment to do. No. Oh, what? It's hard enough to, to come up with questions for extroversions. Another thing that I have to figure out the other two personality traits. Dang it. How do I come up with the question that measures? It's not that hard. It's like, just think about all the things to, that describe extroversion. It's outgoing, talkative, energetic, sociable, assertive. Quiet, cautious, interactive interactive with others, get energy from people, get energy f from personal reflection on concepts and ideas. Do you feel comfortable being alone? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel comfortable being alone? That's kind of an introversion question. It's like... <laughs> My god. How can you feel uncomfortable being alone? I just can't understand the concept of feeling... <laughs> My comfort level is at its highest when I'm alone. <laughs> Do it, I feel like it's all the same. Do you like? Assertive. Dang it. Uh, assertive. <laughs> Having or showing a confident and forceful personality. Oh, come on! <laughs> confident. Forceful. Um, would you describe yourself as assertive? Or maybe I need to like say, I feel comfortable being alone. I, I where'd they say take charge here in this? No, no. <laughs> Wait. Take charge approach. Look at this. I like to take charge. <laughs> oh, look, I, I, I asked two questions. Oh. Energetic. Energetic. Oh, man. man, I hate this. I hate this. What does the word outgoing mean? Dang it. It's so hard to type the word definition. Jeez. The word means friendly and socially confident. Friendly and socially confident. Like initiating conversations. People. <laughs> Who 
Hey. Get my energy from... Being around people. <laughs> okay, one more. We're almost done with one third of the assignment. Uh, not even one third of the assignment, one third of the questions. <laughs> that was a funny noise, isn't it? Bye! <laughs>